Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. And I'm so excited today to be showing you what I have got brewing here in my kitchen studio. And that would be the amazing blues of indigo. This week we're continuing on our exploration of using kits coming from the wonderful Julie Sinden's The Love of Color. Now she has several natural dye kits that she bundles together to make natural dyeing so much easier for you and me. Last week we looked at her natural dye kit which brought about vibrant colors and this week we're going to look at indigo. So join me today as we dive into an indigo vat to bring the beautiful blues of nature into our dye practice. All right, moving on to kit number two from the Love of Color, which is a fiber artist, Julie Sinden's amazing natural dye kits that she has put together. And it's pretty cool to be working from a kit that's got everything that you're gonna need, at least in terms of the natural dye, as well as the various components to create the color itself to be able to take all the thinking out of it, especially with something like indigo. Now, indigo is a unique dye substance. So let's open up this kit and see what Julie has included. All right, she has instructions and just based on the other kit, I know that they are going to be quite extensive. And as with the natural die kit, there are two pages of instructions included, which is wonderful. So written word to help you work your way through the process. Then we have the indigo itself, beautiful blue. And then we've got the lime, which was also known as calcium hydroxide. She's used this abbreviation called calx, calx lime, slacked lime or pickling lime. These are all names for the same thing. So we have the lime, which is going to be needed to make the indigo vat alkaline. This is a very important step in an indigo vat. And then finally, the fructose. And the fructose is also a very important step that's going to allow us to create a fermentation process that's going to remove the oxygen and create an environment where the indigo is going to be accessible as a color because it is not water soluble all by itself. So you have to create that magically with a vat. So those are the three things that are included as well as the instructions. And this is one of probably the most common indigo vats out there. It's called a fructose vat. I am excited to be able to have an opportunity to test out this kind of a vat with the wonderful instructions that Julie has included. This is a process of a few days. So make sure when you do this that you give yourself that time and space. Indigo is a really special and almost spiritual color in my opinion. And it requires quite a bit of love and attention. So go into your indigo vat with that in mind and know that what you give to indigo, indigo will give back to you. All right, let's go. So Julie starts her instructions with some information just about indigo. Super important to read this and just get a little bit more sense of what indigo is all about because it is, as I mentioned, different in terms of how it's 
handled and how to extract color from it. To get started, we're going to, as we always do, pre-wash our fibers. Now, she does not include the fiber, and so I have my fiber already pre-washed. And these were simply washed in the washing machine. And that is how Julie typically works. However, if you want to, you can try a stove top washing, which is what we've done in the past couple of videos here. That is one way to wash your fibers. And you can also go further and do a true scour. And scouring, is a process that uses soda ash for some really deep cleaning. But regardless how you decide to wash your fiber, don't skip the washing. Since the fibers are not included, you have the ability to use whatever fiber you want, which means you can use protein fibers like silk or wool, or you can use cellulose fibers like cotton. So I'm going to be using cotton in today's video because I have loads of this. It's a nice size and I think it'll work well with an indigo vat. You do not need to mordant your fiber with indigo. However, I happen to have already pre-treated these with alum acetate. So mine are gonna be mordant, but you don't need to do that. Just make sure to wash. All right, next step is going to be creating the vat. And obviously this is probably the <laughs> most important part to pay close attention to and work your magic with the indigo vat. So a couple of things that she points out is the vat will work best the day after. If possible, mix it up the day before you plan to use it. Second is find a non-reactive vessel, such as a plastic bucket, a stainless steel pot, or an enamel pot. I am choosing a plastic bucket because these vats actually will last quite some time. She's noting that a 15 to 20 liter size bucket is going to be ideal. You want to be able to have room for it to move around without splashing things about because you don't want to be introducing oxygen into it. So you're going to be managing it very carefully. We're going to be filling this bucket with very hot water. I have extremely hot water in my tap, so I'm gonna use tap water. If you do not, then I would recommend that you heat water on the stove until it's very hot. And the way she mentions it is that it should be hot enough that you cannot comfortably keep your hand in it. That is in fact my tap water at the high setting, <laughs> but know that it's gotta be very hot and that is because we are going to be using that water to dissolve these three packets. Here is the bucket that I've chosen. It was a very inexpensive plastic bucket. I got it in the painting section of my local hardware store. I think it costs like $4. And it has a handle which is nice because I will want to be able to move this gently around. So it is definitely big enough. I'm gonna guess it's probably closer to 20 liters. Although this one didn't come with a lid, I have a top to one of my pots that I can put on top to try to keep the vat just kind of quiet. And if you can get one of these with a lid, even better. They just didn't have it at my local store. So this should be sufficient. So as I mentioned, my tap water is really hot. Like I can't keep my hand underneath it. Obviously you can heat some water on the stove. You could heat it in a tea kettle. I often heat water that way just making sure that you're going to have it be really hot so that it can easily dissolve the packets of the indigo, fructose, and the calx. Since I'm gonna be making this and keeping this in my kitchen while I work on this video, I'm gonna go ahead and put down a drop cloth where the bucket's going to go. You don't want to be getting your indigo around. If you do, make sure to pick it up pretty quickly. But this will work for me to have my bucket with a little bit of a rim plastic covering around it. So 
that I can avoid any drips that could come about as I'm making the vat. Now that the vat has its hot water in it and ready to go, the next step is going to be pouring in the entire contents of all three packets, one at a time, and stirring to dissolve after each one. In order to stir, I'm going to need some kind of stir stick or spoon. I'm using a wooden dowel, which is a very inexpensive way to go. Just know that once you use this, this is going to be your indigo stir stick. So it's not gonna be something you can use for other things. So keep that in mind when you pick your stick. I also made sure that it was long enough that I could reach the bottom of the bucket itself so that you can be stirring it and getting all the parts mixed in. Indigo has a very specific smell. To me, it smells like a farm. There's like an earthy, almost like hay, barnyard smell to it. And it's really strong. You kind of come to love it, but it is maybe a scent that you have to get used to but I find it to be extremely earthy. So I will just stir this until the indigo is dissolved. I'm trying to stir this very gently. I already introduced some air bubbles into it and you're trying to avoid that actually. Air bubbles contain a lot of oxygen and we are trying to avoid bringing more oxygen into the vat and I'm just working it trying to get the indigo powder here dissolved so that may take a little bit of time but just stir very gently in a whirlpool fashion going around maybe sticking more to the edges if you can and trying to get these pieces of indigo extract dissolved before you put in the packet of calx. Next. So the indigo is in and I took my time. I did introduce some bubbles, which I'm trying to avoid. But next up is the calcium hydroxide. I'm going to put in part of the beauty of this kit is also that these measurements are already done for you. So you don't have to measure out. I did not weigh these, but I'm guessing that this is in a one, two, three ratio proportion. And you may hear about vats called a one, two, three vat, which means that there is a one to two to three ratio set up in terms of weight and proportions of these three components of this fructose vat. So again, I'm going to very slowly and in a circular motion, mix in the calcium hydroxide, calx, pickling lime, lime, all natural ingredients, by the way. Just make sure that you are not ingesting the powder. So get yourself a mask so that you don't need to have these particles flying into your face even though they're natural. You always want to be safe that way. And I will stir this until it is completely mixed in and then we'll go move on to the fructose. 
still have a little bit more of the calx or lime that needs to go in. But you can already see that it's changed the essence of this vat. What the calx is doing is making this vat alkaline. An indigo vat has to be alkaline. So this has been measured to produce an alkaline that is ideal for an indigo vat. But I don't know if you can see in the video that it's changed. It's a little bit more see-through than it was before. And the film that was on top from the indigo has dissipated a bit. So it looks like all of our lime is now incorporated, so I will move on to the fructose. Next in is the fructose. And the fructose is going to help reduce the vat and get rid of the oxygen that's inside of the vat itself. So this is the reduction piece, and we will pour the contents in as well to add that in to our indigo and lime-based vat here. And we'll do the same thing to very gently stir. And now that we have everything inside, we're not gonna want to disturb this vat. We're gonna be treating it very gently Again, to avoid adding any oxygen or limited oxygen from the perspective of trying to get this fat reduced down because that is how it's going to allow the indigo itself to adhere to our textile before we oxidize it. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. You'll notice that the indigo vat now is blue but if it's blue it's not ready and actually it won't be ready for several hours and i will leave it overnight but it will not make blue from the blue this vat is going to change colors and we will watch it closely as it changes its colors and you'll see what it looks like when it is ready to give the blue back. The color of the vat will be more like a greenish color and that's when you know that it's ready to go. So don't be fooled by the blue. This blue will not give you blue. Right now I'm going to stir it in a continual motion, this whirlpool motion, to try to get all of the ingredients mixed together. I'll do this for about two or three minutes. And then we'll let this rest and come back to it every 10 or 15 minutes for a slow stir over the course of several hours. This is just helping it to get completely mixed in in a nice uniform manner. So it's been sitting here for about 15 minutes and I'm kind of excited to take the top off because I want you to check something out. Wow. Look at that. It already is working its magic. I'm going to just stir it a bit. And like I said, I'm gonna come back and do this about every 15 minutes for the first hour or two, and then I'm just gonna let it sit. But do you see the difference that just happened? This means that the reduction process is already starting. I think it's gonna work. <laughs> which I would hope so. But anyway, there's a quick stir. Put the top back on, let that sit for another 15, and keep doing that. Watch for the color of the liquid to change green. That happened really fast. I'm still going to follow these instructions and leave it for a day to let it work its magic. And Make sure all the indigo is dissolved, right? Interesting is you can start to see that this sort of oily iridescence on top. That is something we're gonna be looking for. That is one of the telltale signs 
that the vat is ready. We'll be doing it maybe for another hour, and then I'm gonna let it rest, and then I'll just stir it three to six times over the next 24 hours. Let's see, some of it is quite bright blue there. So that's undissolved indigo. You can kind of see it's like little beads even. It's pretty, but those need to dissolve into the vat. Things so that they can go through that process of reduction. Cool. So it is the next day, and in preparing to dye in the vat, I need to pre-soak my fibers. That is something you need to do with any time you dye, you always want to introduce wet fiber to the dye pot, or in this instance, fat, because that will help for the fiber to better receive the dye. So always make that a part of your process. So I'm also going to be including a piece of sample fiber because I'm going to test out the vat first with a small piece of fiber just to reconfirm that it is ready to go and we will check on the vat quickly and then come back to dye. So we'll take a peek at the vat here. Now I did not get a pronounced flower, which can be quite significant, and it will look like a sort of bubble ball that can float on top. I'm not too worried, but it is something that's interesting to see when it does happen. So you can, however, if I zoom in here, see that there is a film on top and it has a little bit of an iridescence to it. This is one sign that you look for. Now one thing I'm going to check is you can kind of see that it has a yellowish tint to it and if I very gently put some of the dye in you can see that beautiful clear yellow maybe a little bit of amber color to it. If it is clear, it is ready to go, clear and yellow. If it was cloudy, then it would need more time to do another stir and let that mix up. But this is looking pretty good. It's got that film on top and it is clear. So it will be time to test it out with a piece of sample fabric. We'll do that next. First thing we're gonna do is put this little bit of scrap cotton in. It's wet, having soaked for about an hour, just to allow it to better receive the dye. We're going to just place that into the vat. Now, I'm not going to be using my hands on this particular video, even though I do love the blue hands. Instead, I will be using tongs to submerge and remove the fibers. If you are going to be using your hands, remember that they will stain. And unless you want the blue hands, be sure to be wearing gloves. I'm gonna just move it around a little bit. Again, being cautious not to put too much air into the vat. And just to give it a little bit of an even go. You can see it's beautiful green. So it is looking like it's working. And uh, yeah, kind of excited. And you can see that it has some blue already coming. The oxidation's happening. 
pretty quickly. And I'll spread this out and I have a bin here to catch things so that we can have a place for it to drip and begin its oxidation process. So try to spread out the rest of it so that it can get all of the oxygen to it, which brings about the blue. It appears to be working. So let me try to even it out. And yeah, look at how beautiful that is. Just love it. Actually, as I opened it up, there was a really bright, vivid green piece there. And that has to do with the fact that that folded piece hadn't been introduced to the oxygen. So I opened it up and very quickly, the oxygen has slowly taken away the green. Wow, look at that, right in front of your eyes. That is the process called oxidation. I think you saw the process. It definitely went from green to blue. And obviously we have a blue piece of fiber now, so the vat's working. It's time to put in our larger pieces and go from there. So I'm gonna let this sit on this corner and it is supposed to oxidize for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Now the thing about achieving dark colors is that you have to do multiple dips. And for this particular vat, Julie is recommending a minimum of three dips. And the next three pieces, we'll have to have this process of being in the vat for about 15 minutes up to 30 minutes, and then having an oxidation period of at least 15 minutes in between each dip. So now this process of building up these blues is going to take a considerable amount of time. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to achieve a couple of different shades of blue. I have three pieces of fiber, so I will have one that's gonna be the minimum dip, and then I'll do one that's probably gonna be four to six dips, and then one up to 10 dips. And we'll see how you can achieve much darker colors. But taking your time and dip dyeing is how you are going to achieve those notoriously blue indigo colors. There they go, first dip. Let these go in here for about 15 minutes. So set a timer and we'll come back and pull those out for oxidation. I'm just gonna very gently move the fiber around. I really love the mottled look, but I'm just going to very gently move it around to give it an opportunity to try to get dye on every piece and always avoiding any big movements so we keep air out of the vat. I have three pieces in here. I'm going to pull out just one and put it into this bin below. We don't want it to drip in back into the vat because it will introduce oxygen. So we are just going to put it into this bin and start opening it up so it can get oxygen to it. And let's see, we'll just kind of lay it out here and let the oxygen start to work its magic. So we will let that one sit there for a minute here and get some oxygen going. I will flip it over and you can see it turning blue. Looks so awesome. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it. Try to get some more oxygen to all sides. Like that, looks really good turning blue. So I will pull out the other two and do the same. 
This is just the first dip, and so it's gonna have to sit out in the oxygen for about 15 minutes, but it's looking pretty blue from what we just did. So we'll go in to get the other two pieces. So I have a second bucket that I got to help me just have these nearby to be able to open up and oxidize. So you can see a little bit will be dripping off. So you're gonna wanna make sure that it's on the drop cloth as well. But it just gives me a little bit of space to be able to continue to move back and forth between this and the vat. Of course, you can use a hanging rod or if you're doing this outside, even better. But since I'm in the kitchen and utilizing a relatively small space, this is what I came up with as a solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that last piece, pulling it gently up the side, put it into this bucket to catch the little bit of excess dye and then having it air dry. These will oxidize for about 15 minutes before they go in for their second dip. So I noticed that this bubbly thing surfaced in the last 30 minutes. So I'm going to gently move it off to the side. I'm not sure if that is the vat flower or not, but it wasn't there before. So I'm going to try not to disturb it and get ready to put these pieces in right now for their second dip. And yeah, it looks pretty. It looks a bit mottled. I don't mind it. Not sure if that will change as they get darker or if that's just the drying that's happening. Could very well just be the drying. So I'm going to gently place these back in without disturbing that and we'll go for our whoop well I disturbed it <laughs> oh well but we'll put these three pieces back in and try for a second dip you can really see the color on top Pretty cool.
So this piece has now had three dips. It has have these, but this piece is going to stop at three dips as the lightest version, according to Julie's instructions. So this piece will now sit for 24 hours of oxidation, and then we'll move on to the next step, how you finish it off. These two pieces are gonna head back into the vat, and we'll start on the fourth dip. We'll take one of these pieces up to six dips, and this piece up to 10 dips. And not gonna show you all of those dips, but know that that's what we're gonna do. And it's gonna be the same thing about 15 minutes in the vat and then 15 minutes or so to oxidize. We'll just repeat this process again and again. So I'm going to just lower these two pieces in to the vat, place them just underneath the surface and start them on their fourth dip. This is the first test piece that I put in just to make sure that the vat was working. So it's had just one dip. I decided not to go any further with it since it was just a test piece, but you can see what about one dip would do. It's not uniform in its color, but it's pretty much dry. It's good to see what just one dip would look like. Okay, final step, and that is a rinse and neutralize of the fibers. And in order to do so, we're gonna take the fiber. This piece is the one that was dipped three times, and it has sat for 24 hours to do final oxidation. You can see that there are areas where it didn't die uniform, and that's because I didn't really move it around too terribly much, but I'm, I'm happy with it. But just know that that is one thing you do have to be mindful of if you want something that's super uniform. So I'm gonna rinse this, and then I'm going to use vinegar to neutralize it. Now remember, this is coming out of an alkaline or basic vat, so using Vinegar is gonna bring it back to a neutral pH. And all I need to do is use a third cup of vinegar in some water and then sit the fiber down in it. And then after that, I'm gonna do a long rinse, make sure I get out any of the residual indigo dye. Hang to dry and we're done. So let's get going on that. Just give it a, a quick rinse. And then I will go ahead and put it into the vinegar bath. Fill that up with water. And then let this sit in this bath to neutralize it. So I hope you found this video to be helpful if you were interested in exploring indigo. The indigo vat feels like a daunting task, but hopefully now with the use of a kit, you'll feel more comfortable in playing around with indigo. It really is a remarkable experience and the fact that it takes several days makes it that much more special. So I hope you'll give it a try. I promise that with the kit itself, it truly is an easy process and one that will teach you so much about an indigo vet. We will continue on exploring more of Julie's kits next week on ColorQuest. We will be utilizing the 
indigo vat that we created today to dye with a clay resist method. This is a kind of printing process which will allow you to create designs on textile. I have left a link below where you can purchase Julie's kit from her website. She also has some handmade goods that she naturally dyes, as well as some additional accessories for natural dyeing. And if you know of anyone who has been thinking about using an indigo vat, send them this way so they can watch the video to feel more comfortable about creating a vat at home. Have a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing you next Friday on Color Quest. Natural dye kits that she bundles together to make dyeing so much, to make, to make,